as Paul Ryan tries to take on Dave Maloney. Needs to go back outside, support comes from Ryan O'Dwyer who's been kept on a much tighter leash in the second half. Pressure applied by Stephen Welsh and Wayne McNamara and McNamara won't take no for an answer, does well, flicks it outside towards James Ryan. First touch let him down, it's won back by Plunkett and Dara Plunkett lets fly, it's gone wide. That's, That's the substitute's second wide since coming in off the bench, maybe a little over anxious. But good pressure again by Dublin. Yeah, good pressure. And again, a poor touch by James Ryan. You know, good work by Stephen Walsh to get, and, and Wayne McNamara to get the ball out to him. But he needed a, more, a surer touch. Dublin's uh, Johnny McCaffrey, their captain, doing everything he could to try and keep that ball in play. But the linesman on this near side uh, felt it had crossed the boundary line. And Declan Hannan is going to come out and take this. It's a great sign of a young player, you know, he's up to take responsibility. Declan Hannan, Don O'Grady was coming over to take it and Declan Hannan just showed and presented to, to, to have a pop at it. I'm surprised that actually Limerick are not covering the, the man in front of it. James Ryan is, is coming out to do it now. It is a beautiful summer's day here in Thurles. The perfect, idyllic setting for a big game of championship hurling as that uh, sideline cut from Declan Hannan finds only the hand of a Dublin man down the field, but only as far as the waiting Donal O'Grady, that shoulder holding up to everything that's been thrown at him so far. Now James Ryan holding off Johnny McCaffrey, gives it short to David Breen, winding up for the shot. Breen knocking it in towards the Kalinan end, but wide, and that is Limerick's ninth of the match at a crucial stage in the game. Yeah, as we were just saying earlier, they can get to within two points all the time of Dublin, but then they fail to actually get the next step and get it back to one point, and that's been their second or third chance to do that, and that was a poor wide by David Breen. He had a lot more time than he actually took. Donal O'Grady just uh, pushed off it by the Dublin substitute, Danny Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe, though, loses out to Declan Hannan again. Hannan coming through, firing it off his left-hand side. He'll have to wait a little bit longer for point number 12. That was a glorious chance to bring the gap back to the minimum, and you just know that he knows he should have done better. Yeah, you can see him coming through there, and, you know, chose the right option, but cut the ball a bit off his left-hand side and from a Limerick perspective you'd say when he got the ball the right man has it here he's going to get the score but unusually for him he missed a dozen wides now and counting for Limerick as Dublin still hang on to that two-point lead but it's all Limerick now Seamus Hickey the fullback from Murrow Boher holding off David Tracy Hickey though went it alone Kevin Downs inside near the goal imploring him to drop it in he took the wrong option, and if Limerick do go on to lose this game, they will be kicking themselves. You know, you can see there before before David Tracy got him, you know, he had, he had ample time to hit it in towards Downs, and I think this has been a problem with Limerick all day. They've been carrying the ball too far on solo runs, and, uh, you know, they haven't trusted themselves to actually hit it in there and, and see what happens from there, because they're winning enough ball to win the match. Kevin Downs, their talented full forward, has hit just uh, two points in the match, being starved of possession by and large he just needs one chance he's got a proven goal scoring record the young full forward now at the other end Liam Rush a nice little one two with Ryan O'Dwyer he's the man that scored the hat trick O'Dwyer going through shortens the grip brilliantly done by Ryan O'Dwyer using all his strength and his power and while he may have taken the score his uh, work not finished yet the gap is back to three points that's two goals or three goals rather and two points for Ryan O'Dwyer great interchange between himself and Liam Rush and just when Dublin needed to score you know they can put it back to three points again they're always able to keep that little gap between themselves and Limerick even though Limerick have the greater share of possession So Shane Ryan, a former Dublin footballer, is in for the final five minutes or thereabouts as Anthony Daly uses up his final substitution. Ball brilliantly taken by Joey Boland. Dublin keep possession this time. Paul Ryan steadies. He feels it's within his range. No problem again in terms of distance. Well, if nothing else, that'll kill the ball. Five wides now for Dublin. And with 
four minutes to go. They have a three-point lead. You start to wonder, Nicky, though, will it be enough? Well, it's just, it, it, Limerick are, are finding such difficulty in scoring, Mike, you know, that you can't see them getting back to Dublin unless they actually get a goal, and uh, they haven't looked like that before. Declan Hannan to drop it in around the house. Dangerous ball, flicked and wide. Gary no, no, Maguire, no, 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 who was no, minding that left hand two, post, eight, happy to see it whistle away to his left. Yeah, the, the twin strike force comes to downs and, you know, gets a, gets a touch on another day that'll be going in. 14 wides for Limerick as Stephen Lucy is sprung from the bench for the big finish. Possession claimed by the sub who's just come in, Stephen Lucy. Knocks it into the centre. Touched on, but only as far as the waiting Johnny McCaffrey. Dublin, three points in front now. Facing into the biggest five minutes of their season. Liam Rush, tackled by Lucy. Bringing his power to bear around the centre. Worked out to James Ryan. Ryan lets fly from way out the country. Wide number 15 for Limerick. Yeah, certainly Limerick can only blame themselves. They've had plenty of opportunities and plenty of possession for, for finding themselves three points Collins, down. Stewart, Stewart, Nicky, uh, now seems as good a time as any with this stoppage for you to tell us who your selection is for man of the match from this on Ireland quarter final. I think there's really only two contenders on the, on the Limerick side. Declan Hannan has been head and shoulders over everyone else. And on the Dublin side, Ryan O'Dwyer's contribution of three goals and two points has been really the, the key contribution. So man of the match, Ryan O'Dwyer. But no smoking in the stands. So the man who celebrated his uh, 25th birthday yesterday, Ryan O'Dwyer, and has scored three goals and two points from play, is Nicky English's selection for man of the match. And he's also picked up Give quite a nasty looking head wound for his trouble. That's him in your picture. It has been some day, by and large, Nicky, for Ryan O'Dwyer, formerly of Cashel King Cormacks and now of Kilmacud Crooks. Yeah, coming back to Torlis where he'd have played so, so, so regularly and so often, it's really been a, an outstanding day for him. It's been the key contribution. Limerick actually, I suppose, on balance, have nearly had more possession than Dublin. They've, they've hit a lot of wides, they've had 18 points, they've 18 scores to, to Dublin's 15, but in Dublin's 15 were three goals. They hadn't been scoring goals to date, and uh, Ryan O'Dwyer's goals were outstanding, particularly his second goal, where he absolutely buried it. And uh, that's the difference between the, the two teams just now. Limerick have been able at various stages to get back to within two points. They've hit wides, but, you know. Well, Ryan O'Dwyer, who got uh, a stray hurl there from one of the Limerick defenders. Looks nasty enough, actually. But this stoppage, if nothing else, breaks Limerick's momentum. They have been uh, clocking up an awful lot of wides, but Dublin won't be too pleased just to get this chance to, to regroup, get reorganised. And uh, Ryan O'Dwyer, it looks like his day is over. Yeah, the, the, the clock is ticking away all the time. It'll be interesting to see what additional time Brian Gavin will actually play here because, you know, this, this particular injury to Ryan O'Dwyer has taken maybe a minute In the of, of time. Of safety, Incredibly, when you think how much possession and territory Limerick have had in the second half, These they've only outscored Dublin by eight points to six since half time, And those wides really some of them unforgivable yeah they had they had they've had some terrible wides but they've also had some very bad decision making at times you know defenders running with the ball up the field they've, we've seen maybe four or five instances where limerick defenders and james ryan a couple of times carried the ball into the into the, the dublin forward line or into dublin defense and uh, sad to see rhino dewar going off on a day where he scored three goals and two points it's a sad end to his day but he'll be happy and uh, you know, ultimately a few stitches and he'll be back. It's not, a, it's not an injury that's going to keep him out of the All-Ireland semi-final if they get to it. And it'll be interesting to see what extra time is going to be added on here because Limerick have to get a goal if they want to win this game. And, you know, they, they're, going, they're going to get a, 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 maybe one chance to do it. Well, a terrible way for Ryan O'Dwyer's afternoon to end. At He's uh, stretched into the dressing room. We'll have minutes. at least three minutes of additional time. Dublin, three minutes away from making a serious piece of history. Paul Ryan, their leading scorer, rushes the shot. And that's gone wide, but by and large, this has been a really composed and mature performance from Dublin. Those three first-half goals from Ryan O'Dwyer, Nicky's man of the match, setting them on their way. And they have 
acquitted themselves really well when under pressure in this second half. Can they hold out? Ball fired down the field by Simon Lambert in towards David Tracy. Manages to flick it back towards the runner. This is Shane Ryan. Ryan goes for the score. And Ryan, in off the bench, makes his impact. So much experience. He did the right thing at the right time. He's pushed Dublin into, into a four-point lead. And that just might be the insurance score. Limerick, though, go right down the field from the puck out. Across comes Niall Corcoran. Corcoran clears it away first time. Anywhere will do now for Limerick. We're 90 seconds into stoppage time. Corcoran again involved. He has worked himself to a standstill. Flicks it outside. Laid back into the path of the outrushing Johnny McCaffrey. Is he about to lead Dublin into an All-Ireland semi-final? Limerick have expended so much energy to try and get back into this match. You almost get the feeling they've hit the wall. Anthony Daly knows he's within minutes now of a significant piece of hurling history. Yeah, and that point by Shane Ryan certainly has put him right on, on the cusp of it. It's a, it's, a, it's a big win for Dublin if they pull this off to get to the All-Ireland semi-final, to break out of, the, of that, that step where they, they have failed to do in the last number of years. It's to be a big win for them. Simon Lambert from Ballyboden St. Enders, back to cover in his own defence. Only as far, though, as the waiting Graham Mulcahy. Drops it in around the house, looking for David Breen, who's jumping with Corcoran. And across to cover comes Peter Kelly taking all the time he needs to steady up and drive it into the Limerick half. Ball well won inside by David Tracy. Shovels it in towards Paul Ryan. He's got Tom Condon for company. Didn't make good contact. The ball stays alive and Nicky Quaid feeds it outside. We're well into the third minute of stoppage time. We were told we'd have at least three minutes. James Ryan in towards the edge of the square. Downs moving into position. Peter Kelly jumped, won by Joey Boland and cleared away. Dublin, defiant and not to be denied. Brian Gavin blows the whistle. And history, yet again, has been made here at Semple Stadium. Dublin have booked their place in the All-Ireland semi-final for the first time since 1948. Anthony Daly, their manager, and the team he's been building over the last three or four years, they're heading back to Crow Park for a shot at the last four in the championship. And they will relish the opportunity. Limerick's summer is over. Don Grady and his team have come an awfully long way. They've done an awful lot to restore the faith, but their journey is over. The, delay, the day belongs to Dublin. It's finished. Dublin, 3.13. Limerick, 18 points.